In this video, we're going to take a look at ionic compounds with transition metals. Uh, unlike the last video, the only difference when we're writing these transition metals is that we're going to use Roman numerals. I listed all the Roman numerals to the left here with their appropriate oxidation states. So all these plus charges that you guys see um, are going to be the oxidation states. Oxidation states. So, um, when we're deriving the name, uh, you need to identify the cation and the anion. And in our first example, we have a polyatomic ion. Just remember, um, polyatomic ions are just going to be two atoms that have an overall ion charge or an overall negative or positive charge. Mostly negative, some positive uh, charge. And so, for the first one that we have here, Fe represents iron, and iron can oxidize at a couple of different states which is why we need to use these Roman numerals to figure out which one it's oxidizing at. But before we do that, we need to understand what nitrate is oxidizing at. Nitrate, NO3, carries a minus one charge, a negative charge. Um, so NO3 we know is nitrate. And we know that it carries a negative charge. But pay attention to outside the parentheses. When we have NO3... 3, we know that NO3 is carrying a negative charge, but we have three molecules of it. So that makes our total 3 minus. And so we know that these compounds, they have to neutralize each other. So if nitrate is at a 3 minus charge, that means iron should be at a 3 plus charge. If iron's at a 3 plus charge, we would just write in the Roman numeral 3. 1, 2, 3, nitrate. So this would be iron 3 nitrate. Now let's look at this next one because it doesn't involve a polyatomic ion. This next one involves um, just a regular element that's not um, that's not a polyatomic ion. So um, Cu is obviously copper. And phosphorus uh, is what that element is. Um, when we have an ionic compound with a transition metal you are just going to drop off um, the uh, suffix in phosphorus and add IDE. So it would be copper something phosphide. Since it's not a polyatomic ion, we won't use the ATE or whatever suffix that a polyatomic ion is. In other words, we never change the polyatomic ion's name. If it's a plain element, if it's a single atom of something like that, um, or non-polyatomic, then we would just um, drop off the suffix and add IDE. But now we need to go and find copper's charge. We know that phosphorus carries a 3 minus charge. Um, copper can have a couple different oxidation states, but what you really need to pay attention to is this Cu3. We know that it has to equal the 3 minus charge, or neutralize the 3 minus charge, I should say. So that means copper should be oxidizing in a 1 plus charge. So in other words, once you add 3 atoms of copper up, you would have a total, a net charge on the copper atoms of 3 plus. And so once we have 3 plus and 3 minus, they would neutralize each other. So copper is oxidizing at a plus one oxidation state. So your written uh, compound name would be copper one phosphide. Now let's look at this last one. We are going to use lead this time. So PB is obviously lead. And then SO4. Um, SO4 is going to be sulfate, and so we need to note sulfate's charge. So lead something sulfate. Um, SO4, if you're not familiar with the polyatomic ions, it carries a 2 minus charge. Um, and so sulfate, <coughs> uh, excuse me, so sulfate is uh, carrying this 2 minus charge, but note that we have two atoms of this two minus charge. And so that means our net charge on sulfate is going to be four minus. So we know that lead has to equalize it. And so we'll go look at the formula to see if there's any subscripts on lead, which there's not. And so lead luckily can oxidize at uh, plus two or plus four. And so in this case, lead is going to oxidize at the plus four oxidation state. So we're going to write in the Roman numeral IV. So lead four sulfate is how we would write the formula for that. Um, compound. Now, let's go the other way. The other way can be a little bit tricky, but hopefully um, we will get it. 
chromium 4 phosphate chromium um, the chemical symbol for chromium is CR and then phosphate um, and this is why we memorize these things is P O four um, uh, three minus uh, is the uh, ionization energy on phosphate or the oxidation state on phosphate is three minus um, so we need to note um, a few things chromium that VI is representing a plus six oxidation state so we know that chromium um, is carrying that plus six oxidation state which means phosphorus has to neutralize it but we know a single molecule of phosphorus oxidizes at three minus and so what we would do here is we would put it in parentheses and we would add a subscript of two there to make a total net charge on two phosphorus molecules is six minus um, and so now we have a neutral compound chromium parentheses phosphate with a two outside of the parentheses and the reason why we put the parentheses out there is because this just wouldn't look clean if we were to write it as PO42 um, and so when we put the parentheses around the molecule that helps us clean it up and know that there are two molecules of phosphate there um, and so our final formula obviously I, I think I need to clean this up so that we can understand this a little better would be CR parentheses PO42 that's how we would write that. Um, now let's take a look at our next one. We have 10 nitrite. 10's symbol uh, is SN. And then nitrite, once again, you've got to be familiar with these polyatomic ions. Nitrite is going to be NO2 with a minus 1 oxidation state. But notice 10 is oxidizing at a 2 plus state right now. That's what this Roman numeral 2 represents, right? 2 plus oxidation state. Um, and so 10 being at 2 plus right now, um, and nitrate being at minus 1 right now, um, we obviously need to add in another nitrate. And so once again, we're going to use the parentheses here, um, and we're going to do SNNO2. And that would be our final compound, uh, our final formula for 10,2-nitrite. Um, and now our last one here. We have titanium 2-acetate. Uh, titanium, Ti, and then acetate, um, <coughs> excuse me, acetate is going to be C2, C2, H, three oh two and its oxidation state is at minus one um, so um, once again we're going to need to use uh, parentheses again if this is at minus one and ten or titanium excuse me and titanium is oxidizing at a two plus state we need to add another acetate molecule to balance and get a neutralization of the oxidation states or net charge of zero and so we would put acetate in parentheses and we would put a 2 outside of the parentheses so you would have TI and in parentheses C2H3O2 outside of them 2 and that would be our final compound for 10 so with these really you guys just need to make sure that you understand Roman numerals um, and what those charges represent you have to be comfortable with finding oxidation states here um, and it's going to be the easiest way to solve these is to take some time and memorize all of the uh, polyatomic ions and their oxidation states. It'll make it so much easier on you in the long run if you have those down.